man. I want to have Spencer Paysinger in here. Spencer's, um, he was on a podcast before and, um, and he's got an amazing take about the Patriots and Bill Belichick and what Bill Belichick's secret weapon is. Maybe we'll touch on it later, later in the pod, but, um, he can really explain it way better than me, but I, basically his take was, and, uh, he listens to the pod. Thanks for coming out to the show, Spence. And then Spencer used to play in the NFL for right. years. And he goes, one of the reasons why Belichick is so dominant is because Belichick is two people. Hmm. Right. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, there's this guy that's on the staff. He's not a coach. He's like an assistant or something like that. Mm -hmm. His name is Ernie Adams. And I started to Wikipedia Ernie Adams. You guys can Wikipedia Ernie Adams. He's this kind of shadowy figure who's existed within football and outside of football. He just left football randomly and started working at Wall Street. Hmm. Now, you don't get to leave football and like immediately work on Wall Street as part of an investment bank and like kill it whenever you want, unless you're kind of a special dude. Right. But apparently they met at um, the, I think Belichick's father was the uh, coach or like a scout at the Army Academy or something like that. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure, but I'm fine. And um, so they met there when they were in like high school and became friends. And basically he is the equivalent of Moneyball for football. How so? crazy stats, data analysis. He's the guy that was like, we should go for it more on fourth down. Punting is actually bad. Huh. He's the, he's the, the brain in terms of, I remember now, him being talked about because they were doing an analytics thing. Yes. Saying how many coaches embrace analytics and Bill, Par uh, Bill Belichick was like, I don't really embrace analytics. Bullshit. And then somebody was like, you got Ernie Adams. He's like the fucking analytics he is analytics. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can go from football to Wall Street. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, this guy understands data. And it's he just called Moneyball. Moneyball. Mm -hmm. They know yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Then he went to Money Money. Yeah. <laughs> and then he came back to Moneyball. Yeah. So apparently, and what they do is they don't market him at all. They don't say anything. And respect to him that he's letting Belichick get all the credit for, you know, partially his very hard mm -hmm. work. But they have all these innovative techniques to uh, scout players. Um they have innovative techniques for uh, reps in uh, practice. For example, a DB runs way more miles in practice than a linebacker or a D end would hmm. simply because the routes are longer. Yeah, okay. You've yeah. heard about this, right? No, nope, I just didn't make sense. So they're like, ooh, we need to rest DBs on this day because we're actually grinding them too hard that by the end of the season, it's going to increase injury, et cetera. Right. So... He's transitioned the NFL into a more of a data game. And mm. other teams are starting to pick up on it. Obviously, Philadelphia Eagles used that guy during their Super Bowl run. Yeah. And now he's with Miami. But there is a it, he's an interesting kind of shadowy figure that I think plays a much bigger part in the Patriots' success. And uh, if you do remember, remember during the uh, the scandal, not this last year, I think it was a few years ago, where they were recording plays. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I forget what They're it's recording not, the practices not of the Not Deflate Gate, the other one. Yes. Right. Okay. That, Spy Gate. Spy Gate. That footage was going back to none other than Ernie Adams. Now, Ernie Adams is not a coach on the team, so I guess it's okay. Mm. He's just a data yeah. guy. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think uh, Spencer was saying he doesn't even have an official role or title. Like, he might just be getting so if you compete, brown bags if you, of money on his. <laughs> like, yo, real yeah. talk. Yeah. If you combine that with Belichick, who's a fucking brilliant game planner, yeah, forget it, it's over. Forget like, it. I, and dude, I remember hearing maximize efficiency. I remember Belichick's strategy against the Rams in the Super Bowl, which is like the you know this insane offense. How do you stop them? And it was oh, the coach sends signals into Jared uh, Jared Goff up until like ten seconds in. So why don't we just give them one look? Have the coach send in uh, a play, and then we'll switch our look. And now Jared Goff doesn't know what the fuck to do. He can't audible. He's not that guy. He's been getting help from his coach. Let's take the coach out of it. Like, brilliant oh, game plan. That's planner. what they did to, that's to what remove McVay. off so hard. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, because McVay would just send in signal, like, hey, this is the look they're giving you. This is the play. Up until they've cut off the mic communication, like 15 seconds left in the, the game clock or what a play clock or whatever. So once they cut that communication, Belichick knows. That's what. That's how it is across the league. At 15 seconds, you can't talk to your quarterback anymore. Yep. Okay, so we'll give two looks. Oh my we line up in God. one look, and then with 10 seconds left in the play clock, switch to another look. Yep. And now Jared Goff got to figure that shit out in 10 seconds 
And he not gonna do. He couldn't do it with forty. With thirty five. Whatever. This it is. is genius. genius. Who is the most effective person on your team that we need to stop? Sometimes it's the coach. How do you remove a coach? They literally probably sat down and had this exact conversation. How do we remove the coach? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he's given plays. You know, I guess up until fifteen seconds. Wait, up until what? Yeah. Oh shit! Let's not show him any defense, and then after that, leave it on golf. The only difference is Ooh. Belichick wasn't surprised by how many. Belichick knows he's the guy. How do we remove the coach? Oh, they got the play clock until 15 seconds. He's sending calls in, so we just give him two looks. And the defense. And Peter King said it on an interview on the ticket. He said, from everybody he's talked to, players love Bill Belichick because they know if I trust him and do my job, which is the fucking team motto, we'll be successful. Do your job, we'll this win. Is interesting. That that is how you get players to sacrifice. Yeah. It is very hard, and I understand it from a player's perspective. It's very hard to sacrifice if it's not successful. Yeah. Right? It's very hard to tell someone, hey, do your job if it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you start having that OBJ thing where you go, well, why don't you let me do me, and maybe we can win. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have the Terrell Owens, yeah. Chad Ochocinco. Why don't you let me do me, and then we can win. You have the wide receiver complex. Let's just you, call it that. Let's, yeah, literally. We have the wide receiver. Well, if I get mine, then we could, let me just score. That's what yeah. I do is score. That is interesting, but if you know that what exactly what you do will let your team win and you trust that man, all of a sudden you get in line. Everybody falls in line. And I think that's what made Brady the perfect third part of this triumvirate, whatever you want to call Why? it, because Brady is the best player in the league, but he'll get in line. Brady will say, okay, you're not going to surround my offense with weapons. I trust you. Put him on the defense. I trust we'll win this way. Yeah. And when your leader is winning Super Bowls Everybody and trusting the coach, it's Tim Duncan and Tim, Greg Popovich. Yeah, I was about to say Tim Duncan.